sitting at the bus station. I'm waiting on my bus. We are going to Beersheba today. So you can people walk with me at the bus station of Jerusalem, which is called the Takana Merkati. So, yeah, so here is like where Ever you want to travel around the country, this is where you come. Outside of Jerusalem, if you want to catch a bus that's going outside of Jerusalem, then this is where you're going to come. And if you have questions, it's in English. And uh, this is where you go to ask questions. And that line is to purchase tickets. Um, so I mentioned before about needing a rug cup. But some places, like, you can just go in line and then you can pay for your ticket on your rough cup at this stop. Or you can load up your rough cup here. Or you can load it up here in that uh, area. Or you um, can look at me. Or you can look at my son. Hey. <laughs> Isn't he adorable? Anyway. So, yeah, so that's it. They also have in the bus station, like, say you come and you're like, oh my gosh, I need to use the internet, I forgot to bring my laptop, or something's uh, not working. They have an internet cafe here where, um, of course, you can use the internet if you need to. There is also a spot where you can charge your phone. When you come to the bus station, like, whatever you forgot, you can pretty much get here. Um, the prices, and don't buy from the stores inside the Taco Namir Physique the bus station because it is more expensive than if you went right outside the bus station to buy something. I mentioned before there's a place called Copix where you can get things to eat. Everything is like six shekels. Um, it used to be five but they went up in price. So you can get um, you can get anything in there for like five she uh, six shekels. You can even get a shot of alcohol if you want. <laughs> <laughs> or you can get ice cream, like whatever they have there you can get. But they have beer, they have alcohol also. So I guess at night if you're short on money and um, you want to get something, then you can easily uh, get a shot of alcohol at the at the Copix, right, right next to where you can buy uh, some chocolate milk. Anyway, um, I shall record again for you to take a look at... Bear Sheba when I get there and um, again thanks for watching the channel and uh, we'll speak later I'm going to work on saying um I say that a lot so thanks for watching my channel don't forget to like and subscribe say yes so I got it yeah, I'm in
ושכל המנהקים ימשיכו לדבר זה לא מעניין אותי מה הולך איתם מה קורה אצלם מתעסק בעצמי ובעיקר תראו שעוד נכבוש את העולם דינאל דינא כעולם אני יודע שהכל יהיה Arrived in Beersheba. No, you can talk. What? Oh, did you flip through the pictures? No, not yet. I didn't yet. So I'm in Beersheba and I'm by my friend's house. And uh, I think I mentioned in like an older video about like all the different apartments. And uh, so her apartment is set up totally different. Like you can never walk into apartments and they're the exact same. It just doesn't work like that. I'm actually sitting on her couch, and there's another saying that they always say, like, uh, religious, orthodox Jewish men don't work or do anything. So that's her husband over there doing the dishes. When we came in, he was doing the floor, and now he's doing the dishes for her. And there she is, just like, hanging out on the couch. So that's one myth destroyed, right? So um, anyway, Beersheba is so hot. Oh, my gosh. In Jerusalem, it's... It's warm, but it's weird because February is the time when it's like really cold or rainy. Uh, it's not like necessarily so pretty outside. And I mentioned like, I don't know, a week ago in a video that it was cold. Well, now I was just telling her it feels like June. I feel like momish, like it's the summertime as I'm sitting in her house uh, when we got off the bus. Um, one thing's another, I have a pet peeve. My pet peeve is in, in Israel, like people keep their buses up. I mean, keep, what's Eel Mendel? Oh, he's playing this game called Tetris. Anyway, I should turn this around to me, but uh, I didn't. Anyway, as I was saying, um, strollers. People don't have to like uh, break down their strollers on the bus. You can have your stroller up. So my problem with it is... I understand, like, you think it's safer to have your baby in the stroller, um, and there's a space for a stroller or a wheelchair. So the problem is, is when you have your stroller up and somebody wants to get on the bus with a wheelchair, then somebody's just going to be out of luck. It's either going to be the person with the stroller or the person in the wheelchair. And usually what I see happen, the person with the stroller is just going to move over like just a little bit so that the wheelchair can get on instead of thinking, oh, let me just hold my baby and, and break down the stroller. No, they just leave the stroller up. And it makes me so mad or it blocks like the entrance. Uh, to get on or off the bus so it just like really drives me crazy and we kind of had that situation as we were on the bus coming to her house um, so if you have kids you totally can ride the bus with your stroller open uh, but don't bring no car seat and take up a seat with a car seat because people will tell you off and they'll just tell you to hold the car seat <laughs> So buses are for you holding your babies or being uh, rude and keeping the stroller up and blocking people getting on and off. Uh, let's see. So in Beersheba also, the apartments are much cheaper than they are in Jerusalem, like it almost half the price. So my friend uh, Zahava <laughs> works for this organization that uh, tells you about... Um, uh, living in the Negev okay. or, the or the Galilee and do you want to tell a quick thing and then I'm going to put the link in the description box uh, for you to check it out and even when you're coming to visit just to visit and, and see the country and you want to see these places maybe you want to invest in uh, these towns you know they have like uh, uh, also organizations where you can give to Israel you know but if you're just also coming on a trip, I'm sure they can organize like tours or something so that you can see the Negev and you can see, um, you can see uh, the Galilee. So she's going to tell you a quick, quick thing because she's just sitting here relaxing right now and looking at me like, do I really have to do this? So this is my friend Zahava Arki and she's been in Israel for... Three and a half years. Three and a year, three and a half years. Isn't she cool? So I also mentioned about like everybody also you can just find so many different uh, uh, ways of living here. So she's gonna tell you a little bit about uh, the area. Yeah, so basically we live in Beersheba. I work at Or Movement, it's a nonprofit, 
and we basically bring people to visit and to live in the Negev and Galilee. Um, we have different ways we do that. We have a visitor center, like she was saying, if you want to come and visit. We have an interactive visitor center that you can come to in our offices. We have an information center that has all the information of every community in the Negev or Galilee. Um, we do different things with the government, we do things with students, we um, have a housing fund, we do like, basically a lot of different things, bring different uh, companies or jobs here so people can actually have employment here. Um, so you should definitely check it out if you're around, you can visit our website, you can visit us on Facebook, and uh, there's cool stuff. So... Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will make sure I put that in the description box. One of the things that she was talking about, um, of uh, like the visiting the visitor center and just coming, you'll you'll learn so many things, like different towns. Like it, when you Google Israel and you look up like certain towns or cities, sometimes you need like some kind of idea, and you need to know like. What type of people live in that town? Like, is it for you? Is it not for you? And I mentioned before, like, there's so many different ways that people are observant in Israel versus, like, what you think you perceive it is in the States or Europe or wherever you are outside of Israel. And in Israel, there's so many different types of uh, people who live in different ways. And... The, this or this this organization that she works for will help you decide what's metim, what's suitable for you. Metim, suitable. So that is um, something that I think uh, anyone should uh, keep in their bucket list to call this place. So that's it for now. I will.